Hello, I'm James Ingram. This video was digitized from a 1992 videotape series named V-9202. We can check out the uh, AC operation of the automatic block part of the switching block by going up here to the front and using a magnet to actuate the uh, two track contacts, T1 and T2. First, we need to verify we've got AC power, and we can do that by checking the uh, lights on the semaphore arm. I'm not sure if they really show in the camera. Uh, if I pull the knife switch to turn them off, you can see I think they get a little bit dimmer when I connect the knife switch, they go back on again. But this verifies the, these lights uh, shining on the semaphore arm verify that we're getting AC power to the block part of the unit. When it goes over a track contact T2, it sets a block to green. So when the magnet's held down here, the arms go up and this light changes to green. Uh, when the train, or in this case our magnet, is held over track contact T1, it should set the block to red which it does, you can see the arms go down. Uh, this unit here, th this semaphore arm and motor here, actually these are nothing but cosmetic uh, parts. This is just for looks. This has no electrical function. As with the block, I've taken the 1203 points and removed them from the 5094 motor and put them back here on a separate switch motor. This has the same uh, th the same arrangement as the, the automatic block in that there are two motors. Uh, Instead of using one motor like the stock LGB arrangement, we, re we remove the 1203 points from the 5094 motor, uh, put them back here and use a separate 1201 switch motor to dwell, drive those points. So this motor here does nothing but drive the semaphore arm, which is purely for looks, and this motor here does nothing but drive the 1203 points, which is what does the actual switching of the block on and off. If you watch this little uh, piece of tape that's on the on the uh, arm on the motor, you can see it moves out away from the track when the block goes to green. When the block goes to red, it moves in toward the track. It's the same uh, arrangement as with the previous automatic block. Out away from the track turns a block on, uh, in towards the track turns a block off. I'll just actuate it a couple of times. And the way this block works in conjunction with the switch, uh, when the block is green, it sends power back to the uh, automatic switch part of the unit so that one of those two legs, whichever way the power is directed, has power and a train can pull out. When the block is red, uh, neither of those two legs has power and a, uh, both a train or both trains will just sit there and go nowhere. They, they both will wait until the third train goes on down the line and sets a, the system to green, and then whichever one of those two legs has the power, that train will pull out. Uh, the train on the other leg will stay there and, and wait until the system wait, is actuated later. We can check out the uh, AC operation of the automatic switching part of this automatic switching block by looking back here at the rear part of the section. Uh, again, to verify that we're getting AC power to this part of it, there's a light bulb mounted here, and a knife switch controls that. You can see when I pull the uh, knife switch up and disconnect it, that light bulb goes out. And if I reconnect the light knife switch, the light bulb comes on. So this, this light bulb uh, indicates we're getting AC power to the uh, automatic switching part of the automatic switching block. I incidentally, these two units, which I'll demonstrate later, can be operated uh, Usually they run together. Usually the uh, automatic switching part, which is this, and the automatic block part, which is up at the front, are used together. But either part of this can be powered down and operated independently. These two track contacts here uh, are what switch the power from one leg to the other leg. And let's just demonstrate that operation. You can see when I hold this magnet uh, over these two track contacts, the arm on the switch motor my hand's not blocking it, you can see that it is blocking it. You can see that, that arm moves back and forth. And as with the automatic switch, whichever direction this arm is thrown, it routes the power to that side. When the arm is over 
on the uh, what would be the right side, it roots power over to this right leg. When the arm is over to the left side, it roots the power over to the left leg. So only one of these legs will have power on them if the block is green. Uh, basically, for one of these legs to have power, uh, the arm has to be this arm has to be over toward that leg, and the block has to be green. In this case, if the arm is pushed over this way to the right and the block was green, this train would pull out. If the arm was over to the left and the block was green, this train would pull out. If the block is red, uh, neither of these will have power regardless of which way this arm is set. They'll, uh, like I said earlier, the, both the trains would sit here until the block goes green. Then whichever, whichever leg had the power, that train would pull out. If you watch the, uh, the uh, diverging switch back here at the rear, you can see that also also moves when the uh, when the uh, track contacts are actuated. And it's basically the same operation as uh, as with the automatic switching system. When that uh, assume that the switch was straight in the rear as shown, when a train would come in across this straight switch, it would go over this track contact and throw the power over to the other side. So this train would come in here and stop. And since this switch was set curved by that action, the next train that comes in would come in the curved side and come over here and actuate this track contact and throw the, the power over there. However, whenever a train leaves this block because of the track contact T1, which is up at the front of the block out of the view of the camera, it sets the thing to red so that uh, the other side won't leave immediately. It'll wait till the third train actuates a track contact T2 and T2 and sets a block to green, which w what, which is what gives us our our three train capability. Now we can add a uh, train to this track and uh, do a quick demonstration of the checkout for the DC part of the system with the uh, this mo with the arm of this motor pushed toward the right, which will direct direct the power to the right leg where this train is sitting and also the block in the green state is indicated by this arm being out and the semaphore arm being the green color we should have power on that right leg I've got a, uh, a obstacle in front of the train so it can't go anywhere that train is sitting there as you can see I or probably hear that train is getting power now if the block is turned to red by going over track contact T1, you can see how that the power is cut off. That's what happens when that train leaves a block. Uh, it'll it'll set this to red and it'll cut the power off to both those legs. Then when it goes further around the loop, it'll set the block back to green again. When it when it goes over track contact T2, which is up here, it'll set that block to green again. So this track contact T1 will set the block to red and turn the power off back on the two legs. Track contact T2 will s turn the block to green and uh, turn the power back on back in the two legs. Likewise, this switch motor back here, if it's over on the left side, will cut the power off to this leg. Actually, since the block is green, uh, there's power on in this leg here. Let's see if we can demonstrate that real quick. Th this this leg is live. The uh, the power is switched over to here. So this train is getting power. The green the block is green. So this train is trying to pull out now. If the switch back here was switched over to the right. You can see this right leg, uh, excuse me, with the switch was switched over to the left. This right leg won't get any power and the power is back over here. Now if the block is set to red like that, then regardless of which way this, this switch back here is set, uh, there's power in neither of the two legs. Both legs are disconnected. So right now, as these trains were sitting here, they would have to wait for a third train 
to go downstream and pass across track contact T2 and set this block to green, then whichever one of these legs the power was routed to, which would depend on the, the position of this switch, that train would pull out and exit the block and set it to red as it left. This will probably, uh, this may not be totally clear the way I'm explaining it, but uh, hopefully the demo will clear up the rest of the questions. Questions. Oh, the one other thing I need to talk about is the uh, rheostats. This has two rheostats on it, the same as the automatic block. The forward rheostat controls the uh, voltage in the uh, on-off section. Again, this forward rheostat, which I call R2, is not a real critical item. Its main purpose is just to drop the voltage a little bit in the on-off section so that when the block changes from red to green and the locomotive starts up, it doesn't get the full track voltage. It gets a somewhat reduced voltage and makes a somewhat uh, more general, gentler start. Let's set, set the block back to green and demonstrate that. This rheostat is turned all the way forward, which sets its resistance to zero, so it's acting like a wire right now. But as I turn this rheostat, I'm adding resistance in series with the motor of the uh, locomotive, and it slows down. turned all the way uh, back to the rear like it is now, I've got the full 10 ohms of resistance added so that the train is slowed down quite a bit as you can see. And turning it back up cuts it back to zero ohms, so now the uh, locomotive has full track voltage. The track voltage. The rear, the rear rear stat which is uh, I refer to as rheostat R1, controls the voltage in the slowdown section. And this section uh, from this track contact here back to the rear switch is a slowdown section. I need to readjust the camera slightly. You can see this section from this uh, track contact, uh, excuse me, from this uh, isolating track 1015U back to here would be a slowdown section the way it's wired, the same as with the normal automatic blocks. There's a, a wire coming in here that feeds reduced voltage so that when the block is in the red state, this voltage in this part between these two track uh, isolating tracks is reduced. Uh, likewise, I don't have it fully connected, but from here through this curve leg up to this gap track, that will also be a slowdown section for this leg. So uh, the idea being that when the block is red and trains are pulling into the block, when they cross this isolating section, they run at reduced voltage uh, as they approach the on-off section. So they don't make a, a abrupt stop. They make a they slow down in this section, then they make a complete stop when they get in the on-off section. And that voltage in the slowdown section can be controlled by this. Uh, Rheostat up here, which is now out of the camera, but that uh, Rheostat R1, I'll see if I can demonstrate that. Now, by modifying the uh, position of this rheostat R1, we've now got the block set to red. Uh, by modifying this position of the rheostat R1, we can reduce the uh, voltage in the slowdown section.
So essentially, we can use this Rias Dat R1 to uh, uh, tune, so to speak, the slowdown section to make the engines travel the proper speed we want. Uh, for a larger engine like moguls and white pass diesels that draw more current, we usually back the resistance off so it's a lower resistance. For these small engines like the one that's sitting here now, which draw less current, we usually turn the resistance up higher, more toward the 10 ohm setting uh, to make them run slower in the slowdown section. And the block is red night right now. When the block goes green, the slowdown section goes to full voltage. If I set the block to green, I just change the block to green. At that point, the resistor, the rheostat R1, has no effect on the slowdown section. The slowdown section is only affected by the rheostat when the block is red. This automatic switching block has uh, approximately four different states that we can talk about it being in. The automatic block part of the unit can be in a a green state or a red state. And this is almost the same as the automatic block uh, we talked about earlier, just the plain automatic block. But in the green state, uh, the left or the right leg, just one of them, whichever way the power is rooted, will be in the on state. In the slowdown section, both of them, both of them will be at full voltage. Now when the block part of the unit goes to the red state, then both the legs will be off. It doesn't matter which way the power is rooted back to the two branches. Both legs will be off, and the slowdown section will be at reduced voltage. So this, this essentially, uh, items one and two are talking about the automatic block part of the automatic switching block. Then referring to the switching part of it, uh, depending on the position of that rear switch motor, uh, the left leg can be powered and the right leg can be depowered. That's assuming the block is in the green state. The, the left leg would be powered and the right leg would be depowered. In this case, the, the uh, arm of that rear switch motor would be toward the left uh, to indicate that it's toward that track. Then the other fourth way is that the arm of the rear switch motor is over to the right, then the left leg would be depowered and the right leg would be powered, again assuming the block is green. So you've got really kind of four different ways that this thing can be, uh, four different states this thing can be in at any particular moment.